In this video, we're going to explore how we can use the pop-up parse string that we parsed here and then combine, as you can see in here, we have this data. We have this here and we will combine it in the chart.js here, which will grab the specific data and show you now or we extract all the revenue data, which is the last item here. So this is a quite useful item here as well, because understanding this combination will be essential, especially if you're working a lot with Excel or CSV files that are used for your chart in chart.js. In this video, we will continue on with pop up parse JS. And what we will do now is to how to parse the CSV file or CSV string in JavaScript. And then we want to connect pop up parse and also chart.js so that eventually we have based on this what we have here a chart or we grab some chart data and this is quite useful because from now on we're going deeper and deeper and this is just the basics this is only on a string later on we're going to explore even more with a remote file and with the file itself all right so you can see here we have this here and this is just very basic there's nothing fancy in here if i refresh this open up here we have the object here we get these seven items here so if I would increase this, let's say we have another items here, 22. This would be 23 and this will be 24. Then you can see, we refresh this. It opens up oh, for mismatch. All right, this doesn't matter here because that is basically all of these. But you can see here, this is still matching with the header. So it cross match with the header and the value itself, which is quite nice. So what I want to do here is of course to solve here the skip empty lines. So we set this on true. The moment we do this, it will now clean up the data and it will not have any other items in here. Even if we would have some rows between the refresh, it will still clean up here the data. It doesn't calculate that from in here. So that's quite nice of our parse. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a chart. We're going to use a chart and then we want to grab only a single part of the value. For example, the cost. We want to grab the cost here and extract all of the costs basically into a like what we are used to in a bar chart is 1 10 and 22 for example that's what we need eventually so let's explore how we can do this to do this what i first want you to do is we go here on charts 3com and get the default data that i already have set so if you want to understand this and maybe you're not familiar with that check this video here on, it's on charts 3com and then someone getting started just this link here if you need to understand how to do the blocks that I have here structured, you watch this video. I just copy all of this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it here at the bottom. And then afterward, I need to delete some of the code and then we're going to shuffle it a bit. All right. We have this here, but of course, these are two HTML files. So what I'm going to do is all this JavaScript here. I'm going to cut it out, put it in here. There's somewhere here between. All right, just make sure that this part is above the the charges data. And the reason why is that here we will work later on with the arrays or with the JSON file. So that needs to be read first. Next, what we need to grab is the text area. We're going to put that in here somewhere. It can be just down here. It doesn't matter so much. And finally, what I will do, and you don't have to do that, is just to grab the title here. And I will put this title in here so I know what's the title of the video. All right. Save this, and now if I go back here, we refresh, we have now this beautiful chart here. However, this chart is not connected with the data we have in here. So if I open up this here, you can see here we have here this data, it's not connected. So how will we connect this data together? Well, let's start and explore this. Basically, we have to do it in here. We're going to work here in this script part. And all we need to do first is to look, what do we really want? Well. To understand this, we're working here basically with the console and we have here the pop-up parse or we're parsing the data. And if you're wondering what does parsing mean, parsing means basically, basically meanings of making something readable from a different language, or basically making something readable for that specific item. So in other terms, we have here CSV, but of course, JSON or JavaScript cannot read yeah, so it has a problem here. So basically what it needs to do is we need to create first JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, which is a readable language for JavaScript. So we have to do this here basically. We have to just do this. From CSV, 
it's there and then it will be readable for JavaScript. So this is a converter basically in short. All right, so what we're going to do here, we have this console log here and this is all fine, but we don't need a console log. Now the console log will only show you this. What I want to grab now is I want to make this a constant. I'll just copy this for now. So we have both of these. Then I say here, I'll remove this and then remove that one here. And then I'll say here, a constant. And this constant can be named anything you want. Let's call it for now a data file. And it's probably not the right term. Maybe it's data CSV or something like that. Doesn't matter. But I don't want to make it too confusing here. Just data file, slightly different from this here. All right. So in here, now what happens is we have this array, or basically this constant, sorry. And if I do console log, it is now showing exactly the same. No differences here. All right. So this could be common out, refresh that, there we are. So now we can work with this specific data here. And we want to now grab only the cost. We want the cost one. We want the second array of the cost, which is cost 10. And we have the third one here, or the index number three, or sorry, index two is cost 22. So one, 10, and 22. That's what we're going to extract. So how we do this? Because we're working here with the JSON, it becomes quite easy now. What we're going to do here, first of all, is we need to make here a constant because we need to use a for loop to loop through all of these data points here and always like here, 0, 1, and 2. So we go to data, 0, data, 1, and data, 2, and grab the first value here, which is the cost value. So I'm just going to give this the constant of cost, and the constant of cost is basically a blank array. Why a blank array? We want to later on replace this here, but we need to use a for loop we're going to push the value in this array. So what we're going to do now is here, we're going to create a for loop. And this for loop is i equals zero, and i stands for iteration, meaning repeating yourself. That's why you call the loop. Loop is basically repeating yourself as well. So we repeat ourselves how many times, or how many number of times? Well, it will depend on the, basically on the array data that we have in here. So in this case, we should loop three times in total. So how do we do this? Well, all we do here is grab the data file constant. And then we say your dot. What do we want to grab? The data. And then we say dot length. We want to make sure what is the length of this data here. Why data? Because the data consists of three arrays. So that's what we need. So we get the data file because it's basically an object. Yes, remember, this is a JSON and JSON object notation, so JSOB, if I'm not mistaken, uh, oh no, sorry, JSON, JSON, right? So this is a JSON object notation, meaning it's an object. So we are to break it down like this. So this is the first part of the object, second part, and then we get the length here. So if we do this, then we can say I++, and what I want to do for now is I just want to grab here this, I want to just check here to be sure that this is correct. So we do console log, we grab this here, save that, and let's refresh. And oh, let's see what happened here. Oh, all right, sorry, this is not allowed. Of course, I forgot to do this one. So I'm going to put in here i. We will keep on looping it as long as this is bigger than this. And once this is equal or bigger, or once this is bigger, that moment we will start on doing. So oh, let me refresh this because I think here I am. Um, having a problem with my screen, just a minute. I need to refresh, yes, all right, this is very heavy, of course, so don't do these infinite loops. All right, so I've solved this now, and I had a uh, crash on my browser because of the infinite loop that started to drain the entire resources of the computer. However, we're back again, and what happens here now is the following. So once we have this here, you can see here the value of tree, meaning, of course, the tree arrays here. As you can see, we get here the length of three, which is correct. So that's matches here. All right. So what I'm going to do now is instead of this here, I don't want this because what I really want is specifically the cost item here. And I can target or pinpoint this specifically. How? Well, we can just say here, then we say here the following, and then we say i, because we have this i here, and then we say dot cost. And the moment we do this, we will see here now the following, if I refresh this, 1, 10, and 22. Beautiful. So what we can do now here is we don't need to 
console log them, but we need to get the cost here. Cost dot push. And we're going to push this value in this array. So basically this value here of cost will be pushed in the cost array, and here will be one, 10, and 22. And then if we have that, we can say here, console log, just to double check again, and to validate if this is correct. So I call here, all right. I call here, that should be nicer. And this can be removed, that's all right. Save that, refresh, there we are. So we now have an array with three data points, beautiful. So what we can do now is we can grab this console log or this cost variable and we just remove the data here and save this. Once I do this and save that, there you are. As you can see here now, we get red, which is 1, 10, and 22, which is just matching our data here. Of course, if we add up more here, let's put in here some extra data, save that. You can see here now it will just match it nicely. And of course, what can we do as well is, imagine you have a different item. Let's say you don't want only this, we also want the other item. So let's say cost, but do we have more? To double check here, if I'm not mistaken, we had, or we can just check it here. Profit and revenue. So let's grab those as well. I'm going to work with that as well. So we say here, profit equals a blank array. And then here, I just want to do the same thing, but except now it will be profit. And this will grab the profit here as well. And finally, we have another one was called revenue, if I'm not mistaken. Double check that, confirm. All right, yes, that's correct. We do the same thing. Constant revenue equals blank array. And here, we can push this value as well. Let's go in here, get this, push it in the revenue, and push there we are. So when we save that now and refresh, nothing happens here. All right, so what I want to do here is I'm just going to give this some random numbers. Uh, this will be always 1, 1, 1, and 1, and this will be always 2, so it's easy to spot. And this one will be 30, 30, 30, and we just make this 1 times 0 here. Let's see what happens. So if I refresh here, alright, it goes here up. This is all value of 1. Now I want to change that. I'm going to change here, and then let's say here profit. Save that. Refresh. Uh, let's see here, profit, am I correct, what's going on with the profit, value, number two, that should be all number twos here, yes, all right, as you can see here, the, the difference was so minimal, it was hardly to spot, and then finally, if you will have here the revenue, let's get the revenue in here, save that, refresh, and there you are, we had one with zero, that's nice, and then we have here, this one, 30, 30, and 30, all right, so this is basically how you can play around with it. And this is how you really work with a, a string. However, a string is, of course, not practical here with your text area. So I would not recommend this because this is probably not the way to do it. And you cannot make any rows in here like what we had if we are going back here. And we're going to grab, or we can just do this, console log, open again this. All right. You are not able, as I indicated, not able to make these kind of array lines here these rows because it's too hard because it's a string value it doesn't work like that might be with if maybe you have some other options but also if you're working with a chart and you have excel data you probably work with an external file or a remote file so let's start and explore those options as well thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart yes check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.